Sturgeon release. Restop. Rejoin with Mother Nature. Hello everybody, my name is Jason Harmon for your Tennessee's Wildcast. And this week we're coming to you from Gallatin, Tennessee at TVA Steam Plant. We're going to be talking with David Sims. He's been taking care of some sturgeon for us that are going to be released into the Cumberland River. So uh, stay with us and let's go see how the fish are doing. The main purpose of this facility right now is going to be uh, geared to raising freshwater mussels and reproduction of freshwater mussels. While we have room in the raceways, we'll, we'll be raising the lake sturgeon here also. Hopefully, the agency's looking into getting grants to set up a, a, a separate facility just here beside this one where we can build more raceways and a, another building specifically for Lake Sturgeon uh, to be raised from the eggs here on site and then put into the Cumberland River. The, the Lake Sturgeon, when we get them in, generally they're anywhere from an inch and a half in size up to about four inches or six inches. At, at the smaller size, we have to feed them the real small feed and then once they start eating that, just within weeks you'll see them start growing and then you have to start changing the size of the feed as they get bigger. The uh, lake sturgeon were originally in the Cumberland River, but uh, due to the dams being built and over harvest and changes in the habitat, they've just dwindled down. There's been two reports in the Cumberland River over the last 10 years. They were just holdovers. There's not any reproduction in the Cumberland River and there hasn't been for, for many years. They have to be between 12 and 14 years old before they reproduce. They don't reproduce every year. It's like once every four or five years that they'll have eggs. Along with that and having to be 12 or 14 years old before you have any, pretty tough to keep them going. They have, they're gonna to have to be really managed pretty hard. What we're working to do here is to get a population up to the size to where hopefully they'll be able to reproduce in the Cumberland River again. In several years now, hopefully we'll be able to take them off the endangered list for Tennessee. And hopefully we'll have a, a, a sport fishery out of them. Get them up to where it's a trophy fish that you can go out and catch an eight foot long, 300 pound fish. And then of course release it once you catch it. They live uh, up to 150 years. Lake sturgeon don't have scales on them like, like bass and crappie. It's more like a shark skin. It's like sandpaper. And then they do have these large roll of scales on them that are called scoops, but they do look an awful lot like sharks. These, these fish are bottom feeders. They just suck their food up off the bottom. They have whiskers, four little whiskers that stick down off their, their snout and their mouth is back behind it. And whenever they go over it and they sense food with their whiskers, then they just suck them up and then they'll filter it out and they kind of crush it up on the inside. They're a primitive fish. They're a real primitive fish. They've been around for, for millions of years and that without changing very much. This nature center is about green building and about interpreting the park and all about nature, of course, but its overarching theme is all about the water. So, you know, we have this fabulous river right behind us and water is all about the connections it makes. As we all know, water connects everything. Um, and so this sturgeon project gave us this great possibility to make connections from all of these wonderful organizations that made the sturgeon reintroduction effort possible, connecting it to this neighborhood and to these children and connecting this ancient fish to the future. One of our greatest missions is to get kids outdoors and these two schools and um, these two teachers are really trying to get kids back outdoors. We're giving them this opportunity to have this experience that these kids may have never had before and may never have again, the opportunity to release an endangered species back into a habitat um, and lay their hands on this animal that they may never get again. We're only two miles away from Shelby Park and it's, it's, perf it's a perfect opportunity for the kids to to walk over there, be involved in a, in a community awareness event, and, um, and that's why we decided to, to create this, I guess, street puppet, Sturgeon, 
of about 10, 11, 12 meters in length. And what we intend to do is to walk from here to the park and everyone will be carrying the sturgeon. It'll take about seven or eight people to carry it. Just imagine you know, an Asian dragon, festival dragon, is how we're gonna go through the, the, the streets. And hopefully we'll recruit some people through the neighborhoods to join our parade down to the Shelby Park boat ramp. We went through five points. I had them stop at the corner and I just rode up to the door of uh, the coffee house, opened the door and I said, there's a giant sturgeon on the corner and I need your help. Come quickly! And, so, you know, and, and all these folks stood up and ran out, and, and then all the kids are standing there like, here you go, and they're all standing there with the big fish. So it was good. It was good. It was a good piggyback onto our, our unit that we're just wrapping up in evolution and into our unit in diversity, and of course, endangered species and conservation issues, and, and especially restoration. And so the, this is a, a perfect example to share with the kids and let them have some hands on with with um, species restoration. The students, when they found out they were going to do a release with fish, they were excited because it's usually not normal for students to be able to participate. So they're really excited. They've been telling everyone. It goes in with our curriculum because we're learning about fish and amphibians. But we try to do a lot of hands-on activities with our students because we try to teach to the multiple intelligences. And this will be a naturalistic intelligence for them to be outside and actually interact with nature. They are making posters. Um, one child is doing a keynote presentation and they are working on distinguishing between saltwater biomes and freshwater biomes, also um, basic anatomy of a fish, the actual habitat of lake sturgeon, some of their characteristics, focusing on endangered species, what they are, what makes them endangered, and how do we prevent them from becoming extinct. Thank you to all of y'all who have taken the time to come out and be with us today. It's really an historic event. The ability to stock these fish today just shows how far this beautiful river has come. This is definitely a historic day for us at TBA. Obviously this is not the core thing that we do, uh, but it's something that is extremely important. The environment obviously is something that is very important to us in TBA. <laughs> thank all the organizations that made this possible. The uh, Tennessee Wildlife uh, Resource Agency, TVA, the Cumberland River Compact, Army Corps of Engineers, and Metro Parks. Uh, this lake sturgeon stocking program is uh, very exciting. That's pretty cute. People have called it a fossil fish, and, and I guess that's a compliment. I don't know. I've been called a fossil, and I took it as a compliment, but it's a, it's a good looking fish. You kind of look at the weather about 10 days off. You tell every one of your students that you've got a, a good excuse for them to get away from the school for a day, and uh, they'll sign up. <laughs> this is so fun. You're a fisheries guy. Did you get to touch fish when you were it was, it was kind of like a scaly, like sandpaper. And <laughs> it was a very fun experience to touch little fish. If I could do it over again, I'd like take three of the fishes down there. It'd be very fun. If you could boil it down to one thing you've learned from Mr. Smith's class, what would that be? It would be to learn as much as you can about life because there's so many things that you can learn about life. You know, just because you see things as they are, you know, try to study, study them a little deeper. In more detail. Yeah, so you can understand why things in the world are the way they are and hopefully that'll, that knowledge will come in handy one day. Well, being with him uh, taught me how to help the environment. At first I didn't care, but now, I, uh, you know, it's this thing on Nickelodeon called uh, Big Green Help. I participate in that and I recycle a lot and stuff like that do stuff like that more often than That's I did awesome. before I met him. Oh, it's so quiet. All I hear now is the gentle passing of water from here at the Cumberland. When just a few minutes ago, as we just saw, kids were here, you know, up to their knees in water, putting the sturgeon back in the Cumberland River. And uh, one of the key things that made this all possible was the treatment of the water that makes up the Cumberland River. 
and I've got an expert right here that I would like to introduce you to, Margo. I want to ask you why is the Cumberland now such a great home for the for the sturgeon, whereas a few years ago it wouldn't have worked for reintroducing the sturgeon. Well, a, a key word here is partnership. There's been good things that uh, a, a lot of agencies have done, but also that a lot of in individuals are now doing. We're, we're starting to refocus more on our natural resources and understand that there's not only a link of well-being you know, in our hearts and minds, but also in terms of our economies, too. And several years ago, Metro Water started separating the stormwater system from the sewage system. In the old days, it it all went into one pipe and when we'd have big rain events those pipes would pop up sometimes and you'd see what was inside uh -huh. flowing out and across the land and into the Cumberland. But Metro Water started systematically separating those two systems so now the storm water goes through one and sewage water goes through another. More and more citizens are starting to really read the directions on their lawn care products. They're getting away from, hey, if a little is good, more is better. And so we're getting less runoff of those types of chemicals. They're starting to understand that if they're changing the oil in their car, that those stormwater uh, conveyances that you see along the curbs don't go to the sewer plant to be treated. Those go directly into rivers right. in most cases. With all of these different parties working together, you know, we've got an area now where we can reintroduce, you know, courtesy of TWRA, the lake sturgeon, and they can grow and thrive so that they get to be those massive eight-foot-long fish that live 150 years. And I'll look forward to talking with you again in a few years when we start seeing those, uh, those sturgeon mate and, you know, making little sturgeon here, here in the Cumberland. Me too. <laughs> Me too. That'll be awesome. Margo, we appreciate you very much. Thanks so Thank much you. for your, your input and your help uh, today. And uh, I think some kids went away, students went away with a different <laughs> understanding of uh, what the river's about and uh, what lives in it. And so anyway, we'll sign off for this edition of Tennessee's Wildcast. Jason will be back next time. Let my baby go. <laughs> Here we go. There you go, little filler. Go on. So this is different. Perfect. Let me out of here. Yeah.